It's been about five years now since the 174th attack wing started flying its MQ-9 Reapers in and out of Syracuse's Hancock International Airport. But last summer, one of these remotely piloted machines crashed shortly after takeoff at the end of the runway. Told you that about the report that was released uh, last week from the Air Force on that incident itself. Here to talk more about it and the mission overall, almost a decade since transitioning from fighter jets, is the 174th attack wing commander, Colonel William McCrink. Colonel, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Oh. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I do want to get to this one because it has now become public of this uh, crash of the MQ-9 Reaper uh, last summer. Um, why was it kept so quiet from the public until this report came out? Well, anytime we have a mishap, and this mishap with the MQ-9 is certainly unfortunate. However, uh, it didn't have any impact on our neighbors or the general uh, public. Flight operations continued at Hancock Field International Airport, and there were no injuries. So when our operations impact the public, we announced that by reaching out to the media. In this case, it had uh, no impact to the public. Um, and as the uh, airport executive director explained, uh, events occur at the airport and on our facility, uh, which pose no danger to the public. Mm -hmm. And we deal with those events internally, and this was one of those situations. Okay. Um, the report, though, did cite human error that created the engine failure. Uh, and then again, when the crew was alerted to it, they still made a mistake trying to correct it. Uh, have changes been made to both the control station design um, that was cited as a possible cause and instructions to keep it from happening again? Right. So following any aircraft mishap, the Air Force conducts multiple safety and accident investigation boards. And the findings from both of those boards have been incorporated into our flying mm -hmm. operation here. Um, I know you mentioned earlier on there that this particular mishap did not impact uh, anybody outside of the airfield. But I'm sure people are looking at this potentially saying um, it could happen to any plane, big or small, remotely piloted or piloted by a human. Um, but could this possibly have happened and been worse where it was over a populated area? What would you tell people to, I guess, calm them and help them understand um, these machines and how they fly in and out and that this is very rare? Uh, yes. I, I, well, I would say that there's always a risk that aircraft could have a mishap over a populated area. Uh, we here at the 174th do everything possible to minimize those risks at all times. And as we both know, planes are not falling out of the sky on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Aviation has an admirable safety record. Air Force MQ-9s have amassed more than 2 million flying hours over the last decade. And the safety record is on par with any other Air Force aircraft. Um, it must be, uh, maybe last one on, on this topic. I mean, it certainly has to be crushing to, to you and everyone over there uh, to have this kind of thing happen. I mean, especially when the, the plane's a total loss and that's over $6 million. I mean, how tough was that for everybody to deal with? How do you kind of work through through that part of it? Obviously, nobody wanted that to happen or is, you know, happy that it did. And, and it's a pretty costly mistake, too. Uh, the, the team here uh, responded exactly as they should. And... Uh, we were able to recover the aircraft. We began the uh, safety and accident investigation boards. And the uh, final disposition of the aircraft, whether it will be returned to service or not, has not been resolved yet. Okay. However, we need to operate and train with our other aircraft. Gotcha. Okay, we'll put that report behind you. Let's look at the bigger picture here. I mean, it certainly has really been a pretty remarkable decade since the unit moved from the fighter jets to the MQ-9s. As the program where everyone wants it, I mean, you, New York Air National Guard, Air Force, everybody happy with where the program is right now? Uh, it, you're, you're right. It has certainly been remarkable. And yes, everyone here at the wing, uh, New York Air National Guard and the Air Force are extremely proud of the accomplishments of the 174th attack wing. Uh, our wing was the first Air National Guard unit to operate MQ-9s, and we're leading the integration of the MQ-9 aircraft in the national airspace. Our partnerships with Hancock Airfield, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration has, has allowed us to be the first unit to fly MQ-9 air, air, aircraft from a Class C airport, uh, integrated with commercial air traffic. And additionally, with the help of local companies, the Syracuse Research Center, uh, we were the first and only Air National Guard site to employ the ground-based detect and avoid mm -hmm. radar system, which is uh, increased safety and furthered that integration of uh, remotely piloted aircraft into the national airspace. As a matter of fact, one of our officers was just awarded 
the uh, 2020 Air National Guard Gen General Larry O. Spencer <laughs> Innovation Award for his work in fielding that system. Carl, I'm going to try to squeeze one last one if you can try to do it quickly. What's the next big thing on, on your agenda for the 174th attack wing here with those MQ-9s? Oh, we're going to continue to uh, uh, press forward with uh, increasing the capabilities of the MQ-9 so that we're able to answer our nation's call to support operations anywhere throughout the world. Uh, while we do that, we're also developing capabilities to utilize the MQ-9s here in the United States in a domestic operation role, mm -hmm. similar to how the MQ-9s have been utilized to support the California wildfires. This is 174th Attack Wing Commander William McCrink. Uh, Colonel, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.